<laughs> okay, welcome everybody. My name is Kate and this is my special guest who's come back again, which is also Leslie Fai. And we're in the seven days of healing group. And this week we are talking about uh, mental health and we're clearing around mental health. Um, yeah, so I had some people wrote some questions and Leslie's going to... I don't really know what Leslie's going <laughs> to talk about, but it'll be amazing and what we all need to hear. So, um, okay, let me just tune in and ask. Um, okay, so if you have any questions, I also have some questions that were posted already. If you're watching and you have questions, you could post. That would be um, amazing. So uh, Leslie is a licensed professional counselor and she's also an energy healer. So she's working on combining both of those, which is amazing. Um, so how about we start with what are the most um, kind of prolific or common mental health uh, challenges or disorders that people are facing because I'm sure yes uh, yeah. um, so you, you, you know I think almost all mental health disorders are related to some kind of trauma um, you know whether it's little t trauma something that um, just overwhelmed us that our systems couldn't handle but that was maybe not some of the big T trauma like um, abuse or catastrophe or death, you know, th those things. But um, so at the base, there's always trauma. Um, but the things that I see walk through my door are clients asking for relief from anxiety, relief from depression, um, relief from substance abuse or, um, uh, whether that's chemicals or food, um, relief from eating disorders. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of clients walk in because their, their um, marital relationships are just bursting at the seams and underneath their marital relationships or their own personal issues. Um, so I see all of those as... Um, parts of ourselves that are desperately trying to find a way to cope with um, woundedness, you know, which I, I think in our, in, in this language is often called um, trapped emotions, right. um, imbalances, you know, whatever way we want to look at it. And so often people come in wanting to extricate the anxiety, extricate the addiction, you know, let's get rid of it. And one of the things that I've really learned is, um, you, I really have to help clients understand that yes, while addiction is a problem and eating disordered behavior is a problem and, and uh, rage is a problem, that it is, a well-intended part of ourselves that is trying to say there's healing that needs to happen. I'm, I'm being overwhelmed here and this is the best I know how to do or how to deal with it. And so if you can remove the judgment or the fear of the pain that's bringing you um, to ask for help, that really helps ground the whole system in an energy of love and self-compassion. Um, and then from there, and you didn't really ask me this, sorry, I just kind of yeah. dove in, but um, from there, the parts that hold all of the woundedness, whether it's in this lifetime or past lifetimes, the parts that draw in even entity energy, you know, which I'm new to learning deeply about, which is why I'm here with you. Um, but they won't hide as much. They'll be more vulnerable and open if they can feel your light and your love and the lack of judgment. Yeah. So, you know, Pam, I think in the, um, in the comments asked, what are some great questions to start with? And um, what, what I think 
like, I want you to answer that question in a sense. But what I would say is before you figure out what question to start with, you, you start with aligning your, helping your client have compassion for the parts of them that are causing problems um, and just grounding in that self-compassion um, and helping them see themselves outside of our 3D world critical view of what a mental health disorder is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so beautiful. I'd like to spin off that. <laughs> Please go for it. Okay, yes. so I think um, as energy healers, we, I mean, energy healing is amazing, right? But I think, and I've done this before, that so many times we just think that we can just kind of uh, clear and clear and clear and kind of go unconscious and clear and clear and clear and that's going to take care of it right so i think what we're seeing is no you can't do that there's limits to that yes uh we could clear initially when we got into this <laughs> we could clear trapped emotions and it had a profound effect but maybe not now because i uh, what i see is there needs to be a connection between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind right yes our conscious mind needs to say oh my gosh this like in, you would in therapy right this is yeah. really traumatizing to me um yeah and i'm just going to honor that part of me that is really suffering that is really in pain and then like leslie said energetically as we are physically speaking energetically that rises up to the surface uh and then we can clear it right instead of like disconnected and clearing <laughs> yes know. right yes. so and and we have so many protection mechanisms and which i think that especially like the depression and our anxiety is they're our coping strategies right mm -hmm. they're our they're our protection mechanisms and unless we are willing to i mean we talked a little bit about this last week with the counter dependent codependent so i'm counter dependent so it is it has been challenging for me personally to want to look at that right because I, as a counter dependent i just want to run away <laughs> so that's the last thing i want to do but it's so rewarding if you can just even just you don't have to know the whole like the whole train of every of the whole process right mm -hmm. Just sitting and, and trying a bit, trying to be in the present moment with your thoughts. Yes. Um, and your feelings and, and recognition, right? And just an honoring of who you are and where you've come from and yeah, where you are now compared to a year ago. And I'm sure the, the change is just huge. We just don't really look like that, right? We just want instant fix. Right. Yeah. And really the fixing part of us is that's a 3D part too, you know, that there's not a lot of love and connection in that. Um, I've learned over the years that I can pour on all the compassion and see my client and give them verbal validation and have compassion for their woundedness. But if I don't help them come into a different relationship with themselves, and them have compassion for themselves, it will last for 45 minutes or an hour or a day or a week, but it will circle back around and show back up in a generator or a loop or, you know, I'm all these terms, these new terms I'm learning. Right. Um, and, and a thing with the terms is it's all energy, right? So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Our ego gives, gives it names, right? As in the 3D, we have to have names to things, but you know, as we know, energy is energy, right? It's just everything is energy and we, we name things so that we can better understand them. But ultimately it's, it's a disassociation from self, right? And from yes. love, from the love that we really are. Yes. Yeah. Which is one of the things, Kate, I don't think I've ever told you this, but that I loved immediately when I got the Easy Entity Release app was, um, number one, you do such a beautiful job of making sure we know how to connect with the divine. Like you really wow. emphasize that. 
um, you know, body code, Dr. Nelson, he emphasizes that, but you do it in a divine, beautiful, articulate way that's very relational. But the thing that like really spoke to me was on the other side of a clearing, you always, always invite back in the light. Yes. And like, we have to get in relationship with our own light, like the light that comes from above, the light that is in us and the light as it gets what it looks like when it's projected through us. We have to fall in love with our own light. And yeah. um, we, we can't, that can't just magically happen to us. It can, but as 3D beings, we're relational. So anyway. Yeah. 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 So much. Um, so I'm going to, let me just, I'm going to look through some of these questions. So um, Melissa asked a question. Okay, so it is what I see and talking multidimensionally it is possible that, um, so let me just read this question. So uh, Melissa, obviously she's worked a lot on her anxiety and she's asking if there is somewhere else in the universe that she is, that she's suffering from anxiety, right? Now, um, this is where I'm coming from. This is a really awesome question, right? So um, we exist many places <laughs> in the universe. We're not just here. Um, that doesn't mean we're in physical form. We could be energy. We could be um, in a different form. So that is definitely a place to look at. I, and then some people I see get stuck here too. They just want to project it all into that. No, uh, I think there just needs to be like an equal balance of where we're looking instead of always projecting it or oh, someone's doing this to me. Right. right. Most of the time it begins with us. Uh, they couldn't do what they do unless we allow that. Um, so I do see a lot of this as karmic too. Like we come into this life uh, agreeing that we'll experience anxiety so that mm -hmm. we can, it's a way that we can then turn around to, to look at ourselves, right? So in that respect, it's, it helps us to be able to see unity and oneness and wholeness and connect with our heart. Um, so. I'm not saying that's easy, <laughs> right? As we're all experienced, we mostly just project that out, right? And, and blame people and this is their fault. Um, but it is one place to look. Um, go ahead, Leslie. I was gonna say, can I jump on that? Like, and I think regardless of where it comes from, whether it comes from, where the, whether the anxiety is because of pain in this lifetime or it's karmic and it's peering through from last time, I mean, from a previous lifetime. If I don't sit with it, Denise put um, something on her story that uh, it was a quote that says, sit with it, sit with it, sit with it. And you've emphasized that before. Sit with it, sit with it, sit with it. If we don't sit with the anxiety and we don't try to understand why it's there and what it's need. And we just try to release it and say, well, it's from a lot, another lifetime. So I don't really need to understand it. Right. it. It won't be seen and it won't really truly release if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I mean, there are, there are things that we don't need to know, but we do is good to, to get a story. <laughs> right. And like even if you don't have, sorry even if you don't have the story if you just have the feel for it and then some compassion for it yeah absolutely okay so um okay um i was going to tune in let me just tune in to you melissa i'm presuming that's okay as you're asking this question okay so i actually would love to clear this i wondered is there um, something about addiction running concurrently. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me just ask. Addiction. Yeah. So what about addiction? I wonder why well, I wasn't expected to talk about that, but yeah. to me, it seems like when there's such a, 
a disconnected part of us, then that's another reason why we go off and excessively do something, whether it's exercise, alcohol, mm -hmm. yeah, anything, right? Right. It's a, it is, it is a way to, it's an, It's an attempt to control the pain and to make it smaller, to escape it, to make it, depending on what it is. Like if it's substance abuse, it's a, it's an attempt to change the way you feel right now. I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take this, change it, get away from the pain. If it's an eating disorder, it's an attempt to control the pain and make it something that I can, I can lose weight or I can eat food. You know, I can make this pain be about this issue because there's so many other things that are going on in my life that I'm powerless over. Um, but it, it is just an attempt to um, escape or control pain. And it's, it's well intended, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not effective. Right, right, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, so Melissa says it's from unbearable. Ah, oh, okay. So are you, Melissa, you're saying. Okay. I'm just reading those. Okay, so I'm going to check for you, Melissa, around um, anywhere else that you are, and then we can clear this for the group. Um, and I know we have this word anxiety, right? So I, <laughs> when I ask, you just ask anything that resonates, any energy that resonates with that word and how we experience anxiety anywhere else that Melissa is in this multiverse, right? And that's a yes. So, um, so these are aspects of her in other places. So the way I would do this is um, just like a timeline, the way we pull up a timeline. And we can ask, do we need to know any more about this? And that's a no, and that's probably because Melissa is very diligent in doing exactly what we've been talking about here. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull those up. I just see those in my mind, in my mind's eye. Um, and then I can ask, um, so we're just gonna clear that energy of that from those timelines and we're gonna couple the benefits of every, for anyone else that's watching right now that we're watching the replay um, to clear anxiety of what we know as anxiety, this energy, to neutralize this for Melissa and everyone who's watching that will watch. And then we just want to ask, um, can we do that now? Yeah, so we just want to ask those energy timelines to fold in. So that just means we're closing the book on them, we're closing the door on them, so they're not bleeding into this energy line that we are on right now. So um, that's happening now for everybody. And again, even, I mean, this, this is extremely simple and it could be really complex. Like we might need to know our conscious mind right now might need to know what happened then. And that's, so we'd have to dig a little deeper um, so that we could really kind of put that to rest, so to speak. And then we're just asking for Melissa's light essence to come back, which is just her life force energy, her prana. We can just see that happening for her and for everybody. Okay. That's good and that's just gonna finish up. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh Lisa has a question. Uh, so Lisa has a question about her daughter. Um, can you give me a starting point as to whether her depression 
bipolar anxiety has to do with this life. Oh, okay, so yeah, it's this life. So, um, yeah, what did I? So sometimes I definitely see this with bipolar disorders. There can be soul issues. Uh, people can have more than one soul in their body, or their soul could be split. Um, so what I usually do is, uh, so usually there's, when we incarnate, there is a primary soul and then there's, there could be a secondary soul. And how I see it is, um, the karma wants to be fulfilled of the primary soul, but then for some reason, the secondary soul, um, is not passive and it wants its karma fulfilled too. So you have this like almost a battle between two souls or even maybe more and mm. that's split and that can happen um, definitely with bipolar, uh, schizophrenia, I see that and I've helped people with that. Um, okay, so let me just ask what we should do with this. Um, okay, so when I ask, for your daughter, Lisa. I get that she has a split. No, so she has three souls. And it's interesting because then the next question I would ask was, uh, was she, uh, did she incarnate with those? And that's a yes. Okay, so we know um, about walk-in souls. So this isn't that. Um, so a walk-in soul would be, um, when another soul comes in to take the place of the soul that you were born with, um, which usually is a natural process that can take a while, not a while, a few months maybe, um, to have that be complete. And that happens when the primary soul is, has completed everything it needs to do and the secondary soul wants to um, have to be in a body that has already grown it doesn't want to have to wait until we biologically are <laughs> wow. not right so it's like no this is really important <laughs> your avatar body your physical body needs to be functioning and we need to be able to get out there <laughs> and it can't do that with a child um so that's so i'm not getting that it's that Okay, so can we do something here? Yeah, so the way I would do that is you could try and fulfill the karma of the, um, of all the souls. So you could clear around um, anything that would make that soul happy and then it would be at rest and it would just be passive. And then you could, and then the primary soul can complete its karma in this lifetime. Or you could ask if, uh, they, you could send them if they could be, leave her body, right? So we can just ask that right now. Um, yeah, so what I'm hearing is for them to, uh, to work on them, to make them happy so that maybe they can be, hopefully they'll be passive and not, cause it's like she has, um, a foot in each world kind of thing right so she's not really grounded in this in this life um okay so this isn't just a one time <laughs> deal right it takes it can take a while but lisa i know you can definitely do this work and i'm available um so that's where i would start just asking clearing karmically what these other two souls need um to be happy and asking them if they will be resting and passive um, yeah, so that's where I would start with that. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's so vast. It's hard. To, yes. <laughs> it's hard to talk about in like a little tiny, little tiny live like this, but hopefully you can, um, uh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So let me see. Um, yeah, so Karen says her son's been diagnosed with anxiety. Can we do something? Um, so, yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people that I've worked with that say they have anxiety disorder, when you 
muscle tests and ask if they have anxiety, they don't. They mm -hmm. have trapped emotions of anxiety and they don't have emotional energy of anxiety, right? So what is causing this feeling that we call anxiety? So I think, Pam, that's a really good question. If someone to, to ask, uh, Hang on, I don't know what I just did here. Oh, Can you hear okay. that reverberation? No, not at all. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, then I won't worry about it. I apologize. Sorry. No problem. No problem. So that would be a good question. Is you think that something like anxiety or depression, especially if someone's coming to you and they've had a lot of healing work, um, we we can check and ask uh, is is that really attract emotional anxiety? And oftentimes it's not, right? So in this group, we've been, this week we've been clearing, um, sometimes I see these clouds over people's heads, these, uh, so for depression, it's like a black cloud over somebody's head. Now you're sideways. That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna leave and come back cause I'm hearing it. I'm gonna leave and come back. Is that okay? okay? Awesome. So I often see these clouds over people's heads. Uh, that's definitely for, I see black clouds for depression. Um, if it's rage, I see red clouds over people's heads. Uh, for anxiety, it's usually like a greenish color cloud. Uh, so that's definitely something to check, Karen, and clear that and anybody else. And you could just generally ask for these um, energetic cloud energies. And it is, it's almost like wherever you go, they kind of follow you. So no matter what you do, you, um, you still feel depressed. And I can check people with depression and they'll have no trapped emotions of depression, um, no emotional energy depression, and yet they're still experiencing these depressive thoughts, depressive feelings, um, and depressive like life. Right, so definitely check into those, um, the cloud energies. Okay. okay, and if I don't answer your question, I will, I need to send you, okay, so lessons back. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there, but no problem. No problem. Okay. So we did that and we're just asking, I'm just looking. Okay. So Jenny has a question about cognitive decline with age. Um, and she talks about dementia and Alzheimer's. I'm going to answer that. And then do you, are you, maybe you could say something about that. Um, I definitely see with dementia and Alzheimer's, um, it's an inability for someone to be in the present moment, right? So we're either projecting into the future or we are looking back to the past, but we're never centered and grounded in what's happening in this now moment because we're always trying to escape that because it's painful, right? It's uncomfortable. And um, those people, especially people that are always projecting into the future, uh, I feel like they, they get dementia, <laughs> they get Alzheimer's because again, they can't, um, they can't, they can't be in the present. So they end up forgetting, they end up forgetting everything, um, because they're always someone else, somewhere else, right? They're never like, in the moment. So it's really important, Janet, just to meditate, um, just to be with your thoughts, hand to heart is really good, breathing into your, your heart center and feeling that, um, being outside, being in nature, just any way that you can slow down and be in the moment. Um, that's really, really, really powerful. As far as clearing around that, um, so if this is, you're saying this is um, from your family, so inherited. I would go back to, um, I would clear through your DNA, actually, and that's a really powerful uh, process. So you can ask to go back, I would go back to 
before the beginning of time or before the beginning of creation. So you're going, <laughs> you're going way, way, way back, not just a few generations in your family, but just before, before anything, before the beginning of time. And um, asking to purify your DNA um, to its perfected state and then state whatever you want that for. So to eliminate uh, what we're calling Alzheimer's and dementia in your DNA, right? And you may have to run that several times, uh, but I, that's how I would do that. Especially if you, as I know, you probably already have cleared um, mm -hmm. how we know how to clear inherited just from a couple of generations. So I would do that epigenetically through your DNA. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Well, and I, I think I love what you're saying um, about Alzheimer's being about not being able to be present in this moment. Um, like that makes so much sense to me. You know, I come at it from being trained from a traditional medical perspective where Western medicine just wanted to didn't didn't explain where Alzheimer's comes from. It just says it's a disease or a dysfunction of the brain. But so that makes so much sense to me. And, you know, for somebody who is already on this path, who's already doing so much work, um, uh, what you said makes so much sense to me, just, you know, strengthening your ability to sit and connect with the present. For somebody who's maybe not as far along in the path of the work, like a client that's coming to you that's that's new, um, clearing out heart walls, clearing out trapped emotions, you know, clearing out the things that are the parts of them that are getting in the way of them feeling safe enough to be present in this moment. Um, so I, I, what I'm speaking to is the 3D. What you're speaking to, I think, is more what she's asking about. I've, yeah. Um, but they're both important, right? Yes. But you have to understand. <laughs> yeah, we really do have to understand, especially if we're doing it to ourselves. If we yes. Sit still. If we cannot be with ourselves, and of course, our culture doesn't encourage that whatsoever. No. It wants no. us to be elsewhere, to be engaged in right. other, because they know that we are so so powerful <laughs> that yes. we create our own reality when we can sit still and project pure projection right well and in clients that i have that have alzheimer's or dementia there there is there is a a, a neural network loop that comes from our culture when they start realizing that they have um that they're losing control that they're not in charge of their memory like then that there's a phobic energy response and a judgmental response that is amplified by our culture right. and whatever wounds we have around powerlessness but there's this whole culture that um has an energetic pattern that once you start noticing my mind is slipping i i i'm you know when, when the client starts seeing there and experiencing the difference, like that's a wounded energy in and of itself. Right, right. So I would call that, it's like a secondary. Yes, yes. Excuse me, a secondary symptom. Yeah. Right? And so that's a, another good way to work is you can always, if you find something, you can always ask, is this the primary um, symptom or is this the secondary? And if it's not the primary, then... We want to get really get to the, you could call that the root cause of what it is. Um, okay, so Eleanor asks, her son is tested positive for depression gene. Can this be repaired? So I, the way I would do that is go back to the beginning of time before all of creation and ask for his um, DNA to be recoded back to perfected state. And um, yeah, for the express purpose of, uh, writing <laughs> that dna right so he's that there is no no issues around depression um so that's what i would do and so you could even ask um eleanor you could ask if he it's a, really interesting to know if he has trapped emotions or depression or right because this just sounds more um inherited 
like you were saying, but that's how I would work. Okay. Um, let me see what else is on here. Okay, so Sandra has a question about light score from going down. Okay, so I think I've been thinking about this for a while to change the definition of light score and actually change what it's change it the name of it to light scale instead of score. Um, so I think to move away from the idea that our light score, our light, light scale is just entity related and to make it mean more shadow as well, right? Because, um, and I started to notice this in myself a while ago, once you don't have um, NC attachments, your, my light score was still going down, right? So why was that? Because of this, the shadow, the, the dark part of myself that I was not willing to acknowledge. And that contains all, all the fear, right? That can, that can contain uh, many other emotions. So maybe Sandra and, and anyone to, um, if your light scale, light score goes down, then it's probably fear or it's another emotional energy or um, you could ask if your ego needs work or if you need to work on that shadow aspect of yourself, something wants to come forward. And to me, it's, it's um, maybe you don't even need to clear anything. Maybe it's just you need to get grounded, right? Or you need to meditate. So it's not necessarily 100% um, an entity scale. It could be negative energies where you maybe cursed yourself or you self-sabotage yourself. So I want to kind of open that up to encompass um, more than just an entity scale, if that makes sense. <laughs> Can I say something about that? Like not, not in the expert way you are, but just, um, I guess once again, in what culture does to us, you know, we, we have such a, a culture of perfectionism where I want my light score or my light scale always to be a 10 out of 10. Um, and, uh, coming to understand that, you know, it, it sometimes it's a good thing when, um, like in this recent work that you've been doing with us that these last two weeks for me personally, the counter dependency and codependency. And then this week of mental health has been kicking my butt in terms of, um, stuff coming up and out for healing. And rather than seeing that as a negative thing, just surrounding that with, oh, you know, acceptance and excitement about the opportunity for healing. So, um, I know for me, and I'm not saying this for other people, but for me, if I um, feel like my light score is a four or a five, then I have some judgment and fear around that. And so I'm trying not to learn to have judgment or fear and just have curiosity. Okay, well, right. there's an opportunity for me to learn here. You know, is it an entity? Is it shadow? What, what is it? This, this is kind of exciting. I've got some more shit to clear, you know? <laughs> so. Exactly the same, right? It's an opportunity. It's not to get down on yourself. And, yes. And then, and just to bring everything back to yourself, I think, uh, because it's all a projection of us. <laughs> and at the highest level, we have created all of it, right? Even people doing stuff to us, and it, it, it's all us, and it's all a way for us to come back to the self. Um, but the more we ignore that, the more it's going to look like we're att being attacked or it's yes. going to look like the more fear is going to come up. Yes. Um, so the more extreme it will be until we turn and face ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Questions. Okay. Just looking here. Um, okay, I think that's, okay, so Laura's asking about her nervous system fight, flight, freeze response, balancing, okay, so maybe we'll do that for the group, let me just ask, um, 
Yeah, okay, so let's, um, I need to ask about that. Okay. Okay, so I don't know, this is completely different. <laughs> but um, I think someone asked me something about panic attacks. I can't remember who that was. Mm -hmm. Someone wrote something. So I just wanted to be guided. So the way I see uh, why a reason, a more of a spiritual reason why we have panic attacks is because um, the spiritual part of us is trying to evolve and up level and our physical, our mental cannot handle it. And it goes to, <laughs> it, it does, it literally freezes up or it, it panics. It, and there's a, um, I don't know what, there's like no congruency. There's no, there's just a block. There's just a wall. It's like how our spirit, our soul is saying, yeah, we could really do some work here and I'm going to, internally make this magic happen but then we go into freeze or fight or flight or and we have a panic attack or we have an anxiety attack um yeah so let me just <laughs> tune into that um okay so should i ask that so leslie i i don't really know this is there what do you um tell people who are in the middle of something like that, what's, what can they actually do if they're experiencing a panic attack or anxiety, extreme, extreme, like, is there something? Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, on, on this level, I, you know, I think it is one of two things. Um, panic attacks often have, um, a fear, like, like, I love what you're saying that the soul is trying to upgrade and it, uh, some aspect of ourself is afraid and not ready. They're like, Oh uh, crap. I'm not yet. Not yet. I don't know how to do this. So if there is any awareness around, you know, what is it, what is, what is it that I'm afraid of? What, what am I afraid will happen if I upgrade? What am I afraid um, is, you know, will be revealed if I upgrade? Is there some limiting belief um, or, or fear around upgrading uh, would be one of the things I would ask if panic attacks happen a lot from that right. perspective. Um, but then just teaching people again, Panic is one of those reinforcing um, kinds of neural network energy loops where once we have it, then we, we fear it and we have more fear in response to that. So um, helping clients not be afraid of it and ride the wave of it and learn how to use your grounding techniques. Right. Um, and your, you know, meditation uh, techniques to just help you get to the other side of it. Um, yeah, so that you have them in place and you're doing them, not when you're in a panic attack. Exactly. Right? You already have that primed, and that will probably create less panic attacks, I would imagine, right? <laughs> yeah. It will. You, you know, it's like people have to develop a relaxation response. Um, yeah. You have to develop a grounded response, and you have to be... Uh, if, if you use affirmations, you, your affirmations have to be grounded in your body um, through whatever meditation exercise, you know, you, you, or grounding exercise you normally do. So you have to have a little bit of those muscles for the panic to believe you when you try to ground yourself. Yeah. And so yeah. Good. Just, um, it just speaks to the need for physical um, Plus the energetic, because just doing energy work is just not enough. It, it's really not. Uh, we need we need the tools. We are in a physical body, right? Yes. So we have to make that work for us. Um, and yeah, the energetic is really important to transform these emotions, but there is such a huge cognitive component, right? Which mm -hmm. is really speaking of and physically taking care of ourselves 
um, because we know physically we're putting ourselves in situations that are not for our highest and best. If we're being around people that we know do not serve us and we keep doing it again and again and again, uh, we're really doing that to ourselves, right? And we're, we need to like graduate from that at some point <laughs> and move beyond the fear um, because just keep, keep clearing fear is, is, it's not going to do it right and mm -hmm. and sometimes we just have to be really brave and say screw it i'm going to do it and like what's the worst that can happen <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> i've been in those situations where it's yeah it feels like life life and death <laughs> right right like but a part of you knows yeah i'll be okay and you have to do it anyway right? and sometimes if you stop and ask what is it that you're afraid of and you know, that aspect of you answers, then you can just say, is that really true? And yeah. sit with that. And that aspect will go, well, maybe it's really not, you know, and you, you help see how the fear that they're afraid of, that that part of you is afraid of, isn't actually true, but you have to, some part of your higher self has to believe that and see you and unblend enough from the limiting belief or the feeling of fear to see the possibility that what we just automatically believe is true isn't actually true. Am I making <laughs> sense the way I'm saying that? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I get it. yeah I, it's so true, right? So baby steps, because you don't want to overwhelm. We don't want to overwhelm our system either. So just one day at a time and and that again you have to be in the moment to do that right you have to be spend some time in the now whether it's meditation grounding taking a hike walking on the beach whatever that is to just get centered and focused and the more you do that the more you will automatically register and ground with that yes yeah that will be like your zero point Right. That's really the, the most concrete thing I can say is um, really make the muscle of grounding and calming and self-soothing a very strong muscle. Practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it, so that when panic shows up, you already have a good, it, you already have a strong connection. You, you have a muscle that's strong enough to overcome the intensity of the panic. Right, it has to be able to override it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of it consuming. Yeah. So what I found is any anything we can clear as an energy, we could clear a disorder as an energy. Now, I'm not going to say that that's going to clear like on the first time, but you can get a scale of how, how much that has a hold of you and you can clear till that's a zero. And then go with pain, go with symptoms. Like if I have any kind of physical pain or anything that I know is not neutral in my body, I'm always asking like, what, what is this here to show me? Right? So the, these are really good, good ways to go in, good ways to work. Um, if something all, is always coming up re repeatedly um, to go in and ask, like, what is this trying to show me? And I know it, it can take a lot of time, right? Sometimes it does. It takes until we understand it. Sometimes we have to understand that mechanism, right? Before it will completely clear. And it's frustrating. I know I, I do it, <laughs> but, you, but just, uh, yeah, keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. So let's work on. Um, let me just tune in nervous system. Okay, so Laura's talking about the neurotransmitters. So I actually see, um, yeah, so physically what we've been talking about is creating different neural pathways, right, with the physical. And um, I also see that you can energetically, you can go in there and cut out like all the all the neurotransmitters, all these synapses that don't, that no longer serve you, right? So simultaneously, while you are physically doing that energetically, then we can go in and <laughs> do some pruning. <laughs> I literally see like an old man in there in your head is pruning away. 
it's so funny and then creating new connections okay so let's just do that for everybody um okay so he's at work <laughs> you're a little guy or girl okay so anywhere um so let's just do this for the collective can i do that okay so that anyone has um is ready for any um, neural pathways to be trimmed to be pruned and they uh, can energetically dissolve uh, so that we're able to make um more enlightened choices uh, better choices in situations of crisis or panic or anxiety or anything that's personal for you you can state that now that you would like this for or you can couple the benefits of anyone that you're doing this with for so it's literally i just literally see it as pruning trees it's, it's, and then just imagine in your mind's eye creating new connections and you can create those i like to use a golden liquid light to come into your crown and just create those new enlightened uh, wirings brain connections in your nervous system you can have that come down your spine and intuitively it knows this golden liquid light knows where to go and if there's other wiring other connections that need to be pruned that no longer serve your highest good that you're done with you can ask for those to energetically dissolve and reconnect to this like golden liquid light And bringing in, in any light energy, bringing back your light essence. And we can even have uh, this golden liquid light coming down through our crown chakra into our central channel, our governing meridian, which is where all the other meridians run off of, uh, this river of um energy running through our body so just imagine those uh, filling with liquid light and then we could do that even with our heart or any organ, but let's, let's imagine our heart filling with liquid light, liquid golden light. And then any negativity, negative energies in the heart, dissolve, dismantle. Yeah, so uh, what was just coming to me using um, frequency, using sound also is a really great way to ground. Mm. Oh, there's so many, so much stuff on YouTube, right? I 28 hertz is great. Um, and even. Um, and smells too, you know, yeah. essential oils and right. smells that are really grounding to you. Yeah, I mean, just the feeling of that, right? I'm sure that's not me, just me. That's just, we did, how long did that take? Three minutes? That was so powerful, yes. So simple. And you can do this. You could replay this. <laughs> just what we just did, that three minutes. This will be on YouTube. You can replay it. It's, it's, um, it's very easy. We just have to make time for ourselves, right? We, we no one, <laughs> yeah, just 
make time for ourselves, shut, shut social media off, right? And just feed yourself with the love and, and love from other people and positive vibes that you want to feel. And then you start directing that out. You broadcast that out and then it's a loop. It's a feedback loop. So that comes back to you. And then when you go back to the social media, it becomes less responsive and reactive to you because you already are feeding yourself with other things, mm -hmm. the love and the positive vibes and the good stuff. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. I don't think. Okay. Scrolling. Yeah, so Liesl's talking about, um, we're just going to answer this, can I answer this? Yeah. Yeah, so again, I want to emphasize, I mean, I know that I created an app around entities. <laughs> it's interesting. And now I feel like I am, not that that's not valid, because it really is valid, and there was a need for that. But now I'm let's not get too wrapped up in that either like if you find an evil spirit that's most likely a part of you right mm. and and i'm not saying evil spirits don't exist as spirits because they definitely do but at this point if you've been working a lot on yourself and clearing a lot for yourself just ask is that evil spirit like is that me is that a part of my ego or a part of my shadow right and this is the way that i can identify and make it right by calling it something else and it's okay it's totally okay but having that recognition that we are creating a lot of this is really key it's another embodiment right it's yes it's, it's, yeah it's a higher level of embodiment that's really powerful when you get that you are creating it all and i mean all of it <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if this is accurate or not. Like this has just been my sense and, and um, part of my journey. But, um, you know, there's so much polarization in our world that this is good and this is bad. And yeah. I'm trying to learn to look at um, any entity energy as um, something that just just like any coping mechanism it's 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 seeking healing too it's seeking light it's being drawn to us we've created it it's being drawn to us to say help help um and having compassion for the entity rather than making it this bad thing that i am fearful of has really shifted the power of how I work. And that's just for me. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but. Um, if it's a force, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just seeing that it's, a, it's attracted to not only our woundedness, the woundedness is the way in, but it's attracted to our light. So it's, it's I don't know. Um, yeah. Again, I don't know what I'm saying. This is more your territory than it no. is mine, but. Um, yeah. I had a lot of judgment and fear around entity energy and what am I doing wrong that's drawing all this in and I teach my clients every day you know quit judging your dysfunctional parts so why I need to quit judging the entity energy in the world if, if right. that makes any sense we yeah because we created it right yes all of it with with war <laughs> And with our thoughts, right? We create those, that reptilian energy. We, we create all of it over eons though. I'm not talking about in this lifetime, but eons and eons so with all the negativity and the anger and with the war and turning away from ourselves, we create what we see as that gross reptilian, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And so that's like, just so much woundedness, you know, that needs love and light. Absolutely. Yeah. So like you say, having, having the compassion, because most of the time that is a, it's a, it's a part of us. We have the hate, we have the anger, we have the hostility. 
And when we can see that, it so much will just naturally dissolve energetically. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you. You're so amazing. <laughs> You've just blown my therapist mind like two or three times here in uh -oh. all new ways to look at um, things like panic and Alzheimer's and uh -oh. yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, I couldn't have done this without you. I know that. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay. So much love, so much grace yes. to all of you. I love you all. Mm. And I'll see you this afternoon. Pink room. <laughs> Bye. Bye.